Welcome to my review of Rigid Force Redux for the Switch. I believe this was on a few other platforms. I'm playing this through the Yuzu emulator. And yeah, this is this is a pretty good game. Quite a good game. It does have some issues that, that held it back for me. Uh, mainly that it's, you know, it's kind of short. And the other issue was that the backgrounds really, really interfere with the projectiles. The projectiles really don't stand up and, you know, stand out in next, uh, enough for my, for my liking. You know what I mean? Like they're, the, uh, the projectiles kind of point into the background a lot. And there's a lot of uh, bullshitty kind of trial and error traps the first time you get to them, you know, that are unclear until you've died a few times and you know what to expect. So you do have to memorize some of the stage layouts, which, you know, of course, that is a, a thing that was always, you know, something with old games and stuff like that. But, I do kind of like it better with shooters that, you know, where, where you can kind of react to more of the shit. And there's less, like, cheap little surprise attacks and things like that. So here you see me getting a 1-up. You can pick up a few 1-ups. This game took me a little bit over 2 hours to beat on the default easy setting. The game really is not too difficult, you know, if you're an experienced shooter player. But I did have a lot of trouble with the fourth boss because I couldn't really make out the blue lasers too well. They really blended into the background for me. And I'm sitting you know, about five feet away from a 65-inch screen, so uh, it does make it a little harder to play old-style shooters and shit like that. Now, see, this guy, this particular little mini-boss, kind of just pops up without any warning. So if you don't know he's coming, it's easy to take a hit or get killed. And there's a lot of little things like that in the game. These little surprise attacks that you don't know the first time. You know, there's no arrow indicators for a lot of that stuff. So shit just pops up or falls on you. And uh, until you've played the stage a few times, you don't really know about it. You can take a few hits, though. And you start out with three continues. And I believe you can take three hits for each life. So if you lose a life, you'll respawn where you died. But if you lose all your three default lives, then you're going to go back out to the continue screen. And from there, you're going to start back either from the beginning of the level or at a boss checkpoint. So you see these icicles falling on me. They're, they're tricky to predict the first time you go through this area. And I went through this area several times, and I, I would always like take several hits on this part. I just never got it down. But the more you play, you will earn more continues. Now, I earned four, the ability to continue four times, but I didn't play long enough to see how many more I could earn. Because like I said, it only took about two hours to beat. But you'll start off with three continues. And, um, you know, like I said, you get three lives on each one. And you have various different power-ups. You can also fire behind and front. And there's different variations of how you can fire your shots. You can cycle through those for different scenarios. Now, this boss was a pain in the ass because you can't really see some of the blue lasers too well with the background. So I found this one to be kind of a pain in the ass. It kind of really blends in. Um, it, it's kind of hard to keep track of, of everything with your uh, peripheral vision in this game. Because the, the projectiles don't really stand out too well against the backgrounds. But aside from the short length and that issue, you know, and the, and the uh, like I said, the, the cheap traps and shit like that, I thought the game was pretty good. But this was actually the hardest part of the game for me, this particular boss. This is the fourth boss. But if you get past this, then really I didn't find anything else in the game to be that hard. Um, you know, kind of irritating, but not, not really that hard once you understand what's going on. It was more about knowing what traps were coming up, you know, shit like that. But there's definitely some tricky dodging as well on this part. But it's just mainly visibility issues for me, you know. I just, it was the, the projectiles just weren't really tracking for me, you know what I mean? Usually I'll... I'll have projectiles in my peripheral vision, but the problem is they just don't really stand out too much for me. So, um, you know, it led to taking a lot of damage. But luckily, this is a boss checkpoint at least. So, um, you will at least start from this boss with what you know your your three default lives. So this is the semi-final stage. There's only six stages, but they're a decent length. The whole game is probably about 30 or 40 minutes, maybe, if you um, 
if you don't lose continues, I'm guessing. I mean, I, I did use, you know, several continues before getting to the end of my successful attempt. Of course, if you use all your continues, you'll start from the beginning, but eventually you will earn more. So that can at least help. It'll at least give you some retries. You still have to learn the stages, though, because they're quite long, and you only have a few lives, and there's not really stage checkpoints. There's only checkpoints right before the boss. The main boss, though, so not the uh, not the mini bosses and shit like that. This part can be tricky initially because you don't really know where this ship is going to appear, so it does get tricky. And I, I would usually get hit by it because I I'm not always sure like where they want me to be on the stage. You know, your first time getting there, especially, it's not going to be too clear. You know, combine that with 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 a difficult time trying to see a lot of the projectiles. You know, because you need to react really fast in these games, so. You know, having unclear projectiles is, is kind of um, kind of shitty for these kind of games. I mean, these, these ones at least stand out, but there's a lot of little projectiles that just kind of blend. And until you actually know where to be in some of these sequences, you know, it's, it's just very easy to crash into shit. From what I remember, the soundtrack of the game is decent, but nothing that stood out for me. There was nothing like catchy that kind of stuck in my head. But I do like the weapon system um, of being able to, to switch your shots around. You know, you have maybe three different types of shots. And with each one of those, you can cycle through these different configurations for your ship. Uh, where the shot is mounted differently. So sometimes you're going to get a wider shot that covers more of the screen. Some of the variations will fire behind you, which is really useful. So you got, you know, you got some different options for, as you're moving through the stages, you want to be able to switch fast on the fly, and you can do that and change the configurations pretty fast for what's going on. So I do like that. And everything beyond that fourth boss really wasn't wasn't too difficult for me. The final boss maybe took me, I might have got it on my second try, second or third uh, continue. I think I got it um, maybe on my second try when I had all my lives. Because I got there um, without my full live set, and I, and I almost beat it. So really it was that fourth boss that gave me the most trouble. These games a lot of times are not the most balanced difficulty wise when it comes to shooters you know they don't really have that most of them don't have a gradual difficulty curve it's usually all over the place but you know they they generally get harder near the end but in this case i found the fourth stage was the hardest all around you know not just the boss but the bullshit with the icicles for me was, was tricky to to not take damage on but i guess the fifth stage was a little bit of a pain as well you know because of some of the traps so some of the stages like i said they're they're Difficult for the wrong reason, you know, but this is the final boss. I didn't get too good at it, but I will show the full fight. Um, that way you at least know what to expect difficulty-wise. But the fourth, you know, I would say the fourth boss is going to be the real uh, challenge, I think. You also have a power shot. You know, you, you um, hold down the one of the triggers to absorb these green little... Uh, fucking dust things and um, when you absorb it you fill up that bar on the bottom you get that dust by killing enemies and when you fill it up enough you know you'll have a full bar but you can use it at any time to do power shots and that will do a little bit of a you know it's kind of like a more powerful version of your current shot it'll do a little bit more damage to enemies but yeah this wasn't too refined because I think this was my second time trying the final boss so it wasn't uh it wasn't too well done, but I did scrape through. I believe there's some, there may be some harder settings that unlock after you beat the game. There was something that unlocked. Maybe I'll show it here. But 
But the final boss, it, you know, it has multiple phases, but really not too difficult since you have three lives and you can take three hits with each life. So um, you may take some damage like I did, but it, it shouldn't be too difficult if you're uh, decently experienced with these kind of games. I wanted to use my modded stick for this game, but I had to use a, uh, or I ended up using an Xbox One Elite 2 controller for the game because uh, of the D-pad and I wanted to have access to all the triggers since this game uses all the triggers and bumpers or most of them anyway. So, you know, with these kind of games, it's a pain in the ass when you're using an, an arcade stick when, when you have like, you know, eight different buttons that you're trying to keep track of on a joystick it never works well for me. So you can also select any of the stages you completed as well in the menu. So you can kind of practice stages that you already beat. But unfortunately, you can't practice stages that you that you that you got to. You know what I mean? You have to complete the stage for it to unlock in that practice. You could also use the stage select if you wanted to maybe um, to maybe beat the game. Maybe I'm not sure if that would work. I never tried that. I wanted to beat it, you know, on the limited continues that the game had. But for me, this game's a seven out of ten. Like I said, it has some issues, but I think it's a good game. It's a good shooter overall. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.